This is Andy Poorwa, Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Take two. I am delighted to be joined by Joe Cordina over Zoom. Joe, obviously, he's on fatherly duties earlier, but you can finally got that taken care of now. Um, has your little boy settled? Yeah, the, um, well, I say settled. I set up, well, my missus just come back and just took over, that's all. <laughs> but um, I'm sure he'll be kicking off in the next 10 minutes, so, yeah. Well, right, well, we'll try and keep it short and sweet so we can get through everything. Um, do you have a good Christmas, mate? Um, I want to say yeah, which we did because we were my me and my close family were together. But um, I had COVID over Christmas. I was banged up, um, so I was quarantining. Uh, so I, I want to say yeah, but we weren't able to do uh, most of the things that we always do with the uh, the distant um, the close family as well. Um, yeah, which I was a bit gutted because I always look forward to Christmas, especially for the kids. But um, yeah, overall, it was a good one. Unfortunately, it does seem to be kind of a, a, the same story for a lot of people that I'm speaking to uh, since coming back early January. A lot of people in boxing catching COVID around then. Uh, but glad to see you're, um, you're, you're back and you're healthy, mate. Um, also, you must feel quite thankful you got out just before catching COVID because I imagine it would have been a pain in the backside if something had happened, say, a week or two before your fight on the 11th. Mate, so every, everywhere I was going, like, where... I sort of, how can I say, I've had my two jabs. I haven't had my booster yet. I was meant to get it yesterday. Um, but obviously, when I caught COVID over Christmas, the space of time ain't enough. Um, so when I had the two jabs, I was sort of like, I wasn't taking it, I can't say I wasn't taking it serious, but I was just sort of lack of days with it going in everywhere, here, there and everywhere. Not really caring. Um, but then before my fights, I was just mask everywhere. Wrapped up, mask on, my hood up, tights. I just was making sure that, like, there was people inviting me to shows and stuff like that, um, places, and I was just like, nah, I ain't coming. Because if I have a, if I catch it a week before my fight, that's twelve weeks wasted. Don't get me wrong, not wasted because I learned a lot of stuff through the camp, but the end pro uh, product which would have been fighting would have gone to waste. So, yeah, I didn't want to risk that. Um, but yeah, I'm just thankful that I managed to get up before I did catch it. Just to go back to that then as a starting point for us, a UD win back on December 11th, what would you make of your performance? A bit of time to reflect now. Yeah. Um, when I've watched it back, it's, it's just one of them things. Like you get opponents like, um, is it Granada who box Connor? Yeah. They, he's a high level, um, he's been in with high level opposition. So he's been in the, and he's, he's had some tough fights with some high opposition as well. Um, but then when he comes to fighting Connor, he just went on a back foot and run for the, the whole fight. Which this this kid, same we had the same record, both undefeated. He was a good amateur. He's been in the same some of the same tournaments I've been in. He's beat some uh, people that I've beat. He's lost to some people that I've beat. So he's been in a good calibre of opposition as an amateur and he's been at the top level. But when it came into it, and I thought, right, he's undefeated. He's gonna have a go, because it's a big opportunity for him. It's on a big show. Um, he just ran away, and I just like I just I just couldn't get my head around it. I could have made a boat made it a boring fight. I boxed him easily on a back foot, but nothing would have happened because he's not gonna come forward. So it was just one of them things, like me trying to cut him off all of the, all night. It was like I got out of the ring and I had fucking tight hamstrings from chasing him all around the place. So he's like, fucking, like, slow down, come on. If you, you, you must have an inkling that you're losing the fight. Have a go. And then we would have seen a, you would have seen a, um, a little bit of what we were working on in the gym. But nevertheless, I got the win, got it quite easy. Um, so yeah, I've just, I'm just thankful that I got out three times this year and, um, and all three fights really relatively easy wins. So, yeah. I mean, Joe, obviously, sense of frustration there, speaking about that final one in particular. Um, but as you said, you got out three times, so you got three wins and looked comfortable throughout. Yeah. So for yourself, moving into 2022, what is the plan? Um, it's always been for me is to be fighting for a world title and winning a world title. So for me, I just want to edge closer to that, to um that point, which is to box, whether it's uh, the, for the WBA, IBF, WCO, WBO, I couldn't give a shit what one it is. 
Um, at the minute, we've Eddie just signed the IBF champion Ogawa, so that makes sense. Um, also, the WBA is there. Um, but really and truly, I couldn't give a shit which one it is. Um, as long as I get close to a world title and fight for a world title this year, I'll be happy. Because um, no doubt, when I do fight, I'll be grabbing that opportunity with both hands and I'll be taking the belt wherever I'm going. Um, and then I'll be calling the shot. So um, that's what my plan is for 2022. Do you have a time frame in mind as to when you'd like to challenge for World Honours, Joe? My next fight, I'd love to. My next fight, maybe whether it's March, April. Um but it's, I just got to leave my management, Tony, um, uh, do the do that business side of things and uh, sort it out with Eddie. Um, so that's that's uh, where I got to leave it. My sort of, how can I say, yeah, it's me wanting to, but the business side of things goes through them, uh, them two uh, people there, Tony and Eddie. So, yeah, I just got to wait for them and see where we go when I get back up into to Essex. I mean, a lot of people would assume the, the likely, likely East uh, opportunity for you will come from Agara having signed him after his victory against Azinga Fuzile. Yeah. Do you think that's most likely? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it would make it just makes sense, don't it? It's not like we, Eddie's got got him um, two matchroom fighters. He goes in with the champion, walks out with the champion, so. Um, yeah, it makes sense for Eddie. It makes sense for us. Um, and it, I think it makes sense for all sides because if he lost there, he'd probably have a, a rematch close. He gets another opportunity straight off, off the bat. So, um, yeah, but I just got to leave them, uh, Eddie and Tony, do the business and then, um, and then, yeah, just hope for the best, really. Have you had any initial conversations about it? Well, yeah, it's been the card's been dangled, um, and we have talked about it. But it's just, it's, it's totally, really, un, and truly, what that Ogawa wants to do. Whether it's he wants to fight in Japan, I know he wants to uh, have his first defense in Japan, um, but I don't know how that will work with the current times with COVID and stuff. Um, I'm not sure if they're letting people in and all that sort of stuff. So it probably make better sense it being over here. Um, or in the states or whatever it is, uh, but yeah, I like it, it, I'm just looking forward to getting a world title shot this year, and that's what my plan is to do. I know as an amateur, Joe, you'd have traveled all the way around the world with GB. Yeah. Would you be happy to go to you know, I'll go as back garden, you know, go to Japan and, and challenge him there if if that was my only option, and it'd have to be, but um, I think. I think there's many um, scenarios we could l look look at. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a long way away, and I know a lot of people, especially from the UK, will want to travel. Um, but with the current times, I don't think it's going to be possible. Um, so yeah, I just I I, I think the, for the best, um, how can I say the best situation out of it would probably be over in the UK or whether it's in America on a big show or it'd be it'd either either or, but it, the UK would be uh, best for me and better in Cardiff. It'd be nice to have it in Cardiff. That'd be a great one. Um, what did you make of his victory against Fuzilo? Yeah, I, I think it, I sort of expected that. I'm, like people are saying Fuzili this, Fuzili that. Yeah, he's awkward, but that's that's where it stops. He's awkward. Nothing nothing more. He's just, he's a sit-back counter-puncher. Um, and he's got quite an awkward style because he's a southpaw. But when you've got Fusili, who's who's been in some good fights, and he's a come forward fighter, strong, um, and he's just pretty direct with everything. He's just there, they in front of you, and he's gonna make make you work. And especially when you're a fighter like Fusili, who is a counter puncher, but he's he's just a reaction fighter. So he's excuse me, he's just reacting to what you're doing, which. In the end, will burn energy, and you will you will start deteriorating over the course of a twelve round fight. And I just think um, he was a bit too much for him. He, the size difference was quite a uh, quite a, uh, a factor as well. I thought she, uh, Ogawa was quite big, um, especially compared to Fusili. 
for Agawa and from what you saw, Joe, stylistically, is that a much better bout for you than what you obviously previously had then? And how would you expect it to play out? Yeah, I think if I had to pick the two out of Fusili and Ogawa to fight, I would pick Ogawa. But um, because the only thing I, I know, I ain't got to go and look for him. He's going to come to me. Um, and I think boxing wise, uh, technically, he's not the best. He's good. He's fit. He's strong. So I, I got to be careful. I got to be switched on at all times. But the, with Fusili, is a bit more awkward. It's not going to be exciting. It's not going to, the fight ain't going to set a light. So um, I think for me, styli stylistically, it'd be the better option would be Ogawa. But he's a, he's a very good fighter. That's, I'm not saying that he's not a good fighter. He's a great fighter and he's deservingly a world champion at this present moment. Um, but I'd love that shot. I mean, just looking at the world champion, the other world champions that is, Joe, you've got uh, Roger Gutierrez, um, Oscar Valdez and Shakur Stevenson. Shakur seems to be the name uh, at the top of the division for most people. Is is he the one who's, let's say you fought uh, Aguero, you beat him. Is he the one you'd want to face to feel like you can test yourself against the other man who's considered the best in the, in the super featherweight division? Yeah, of course. He's, like you said, he's considered probably the best in that division. Um, people say Oscar Valdez, but technically, um, Shakur is probably the most gifted and talented in uh, out of the world champions, especially. Um, he's been a top level in the amateurs. He, he's one of the best amateurs, um, especially in in Rio Olympics. I was at that Olympics. He was one of the standouts that I watched, um, and then he's just excelled as a pro. So he is a top, top 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 caliber opponent um a fighter and yeah he's an opponent that if i won a world title i'd be aiming for because he's considered the best and if you want to be the best in that division and unify which every fighter wants to do um he's the guy you're gonna to have to beat so yeah he's uh he's someone that you would look at and i would look at if i won that ibf title um but yeah, I gotta win our title first, and then, then we can start making moves. Joe, just wait for myself. I want to touch on some of the other guys in the gym. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk about what could be next for young Connor Ben. He's had a, just a stellar growth since teaming up with Tony, and everybody's seen the development of his career, especially over his last couple of years through the pandemic. But what could be next? We saw Eddie mention Adrian Broner, Robert Guerrero, or Maurice Hooker as potential uh, names. What are your thoughts as what what would you like to see Connor do next and face next? Um, yeah, I think them. Adrian Broner, I think yeah, he's not the fighter that he was a few, well, I say few, eight, nine years ago. He ain't that fighter. But when he was fighting the likes of Gavin Reese and them sort of fighters, them calibers of fighters, and when he was fighting, say, um, uh, what's his name? Um, can't even think of his name. Anyway, um, say eight years ago, he's not that fighter. But at this present moment, he's still. He's still a name and he's going to draw a lot of money, which, yeah, that's every fighter wants to earn that money. But I think as he progresses, people are going to see him in that world title fight, which everyone's going to want it. He's going to want it as well. But at this present moment, he's still learning, but he's progressing and he's he's dealing with every um, obstacle in his way at this present moment. So I'm just, I'm I'm along the ride with him. I'm just wanna. I'm happy to see him fight and progress, and we're in the same gym. We do everything together when we're in the gym, and it's 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 quite um it's pleasing to see him progress. And you have people that are knocking him in previously when he fought that French geezer. Um, I can't think of his name. Um, Cedric Paynard. Yeah, Paynard. So when uh, when he fought Paynard, a lot of people was straight on his back, but they're still thinking that he's that same fighter. He's not that same fighter. i got to keep putting people, hang on a minute, when they're talking about Conor, like, hang on, you ain't in the gym with him. You're just taking it off there and you're not, you're not giving a chance. He's, um, he's progress. He's coming on. He's, he's learning all the time. And I think I, I'd say a couple, I'd say three, four more fights. 
at the level he's fighting at now, the the world level, uh, world fringe world level fighters. Yeah, um, uh, Algeria's world level. I think he's just a little bit past it, but um, then fringe world level fighters, and then I think he's ready for any of the big boys. So I'm just happy, and I'm I'm excited, and I'm along the ride with him, and I'm I'm clapping him on, um, and I, so is a lot of other people, and I'm just happy to see him progress. Away from Connor, you've got John Ryder getting ready to face Danny Jacobs on Feb 12th as well, Joe. Massive opportunity for John. What do you make of a fight? That's a very, very hard fight, but it's not a fight that John ain't capable of winning. You've seen what John did against um, Callum Smith um, and everyone he's faced, really. Uh, I think if he's going to beat Daniel Jacobs, it's going to be now, because Daniel is he hasn't been as, in, is as active as he was four years ago, four or five years ago. He was fighting three, four times a year, um, but now he's I can't remember the last time he fought. So, um, yeah, John, same way, but he's he's nicking eight rounders here and there. Uh, so yeah, he's and he's always in the gym, which is a great thing. But I think, I think it's a very very tough fight still, but I think it's a, a fight that John is very capable of winning, um, and inside the distance too. Joe, just get your thoughts on a couple of things um, coming up and um, what I've been spoken about. You'll know him well, Anthony Joshua. We'll wait and see what's going to happen with his rematch with Alexander Usyk. Heading into it, Joe, what's your advice to him? You know, people seem to suggest aggressions, the key, but I've spoken to a few guys and they've said being aggressive against Usyk won't necessarily mean that he's going to be successful because he's such a, a like a scientist of the sport. He'll just work yeah. out what you're going to do. Do you agree yeah. with that sentiment? Um, yeah, to a, to an extent. Um, I think he's still got to be patient, uh, similar to what he was in the first fight. But um, I think when he, he, he does attack, he's got to... He can't just attack with ones and twos like he was doing. He's got to attack in flurries and, and put it on him a little bit. I think um, I think when he, when he was... He was standing off him and he... He was he was trying to outbox arguably the one of the best fighters in boxing at this present moment technically. So um, I just thought that was so silly. I just thought who was telling him to do that? Like because yeah, surely he's not he's not a he's not a daft guy. He's he's a he's a smart guy. So surely whoever's telling you that, obviously he's got to listen to instructions. But whoever was telling him that was just had that completely wrong. Um, but I think he's got to. He's got to attack sort of similar, but it's got to be in flurries and 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 and, and try not to get over eager because if he gets over eager and he might blow himself out, and that's when Usyk will work him out, let him have his head, and then um, try not box him and just do what he did last time and, and break him down. But um, I think this is a, f- a fight that I think that AJ could win um, inside the distance. But I think he's he's got to get his tactics spot on. Otherwise, it's like there's no there's no room for error. There's literally not one little bit because he'll. It's like a, a fight with Lomachenko. Lomachenko is arguably is the probably technically the best fighter out there, even though he's lost. But um, everything he does, you make one mistake, that's it. He's on you. And I, uh, Usyk is the same fighter. Joe, away from them, uh, two fights coming up. Amir Khan and Cal Brook, Feb 19th. Your take, your thoughts? Uh, I, I think it's about 10 years too late. But, um, yeah, it, it's still an exciting fight, isn't it? It's like, no, I've, I've wanted to watch that since I was a little bit, like I was young, since I was in the amateurs. And um, I, it's a very, I think it's a 50 50 fight. I, they're both not the fighter they were. Uh, Khan's still got that speed and he's got that he has got that punch power but Cal Brook have got timing and punch power which it's just whoever gets it right on the night I think it's a 50-50 fight for me and um, final one Eubank Jr versus a fellow Welshman of yours Liam Williams what's your take on it? Uh, yeah, it's a hard fight isn't it a hard fight for both um, uh, it's going to ignite straight off the bat I think um, as soon as the first bell goes, it's, 
I say, I think it's going to just both of them head down and just swing at it. I think, um, I think all all the tactics will go out the window because Eubank he loves a terror, but so does Liam. It's 50 50 for me. It's a hard fight, a hard fight to call them two fights there. Can and Can and Brooke and Liam Williams and and Newbank that yeah they're two great fights but so hard to call. <laughs> right, Joe, leave it there now. Leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. It's a pleasure to catch up with you. Hopefully, I will see you at a show soon. Uh, I look forward to your next fight announcement. Thank you for speaking to me on Boxing Social. Andy, nice one, brother. Take care. God bless. Top man. Cheers, Joe. Look after yourself, mate. You too. You too. See you later, mate. Bye. Bye.